Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about switching from the red team to the blue team. Now this is one that I surprisingly found highly requested in my comments and personally I hadn't previously thought about this topic before but, but I do think it's definitely very interesting in terms of transferable skills and certifications and things like that that you can use whether you're starting from red team and you want to go into blue team or you're starting from blue team and want to go into red team. So first I did want to start with my personal experience just to kind of share or put into perspective how I was able to work in red team and blue team roles in my fairly short three year career but of course feel free to jump around the timestamps in the video as well. But yeah, I guess starting from the beginning, I started my cybersecurity career in a cybersecurity rotational program and this basically gave me a chance to try a bunch of different teams and it just so happened that my second rotation or my second team that I joined was a junior pen testing team and in that role I did various different things from capture the flags to learning about different vulnerabilities, using burp suite, learning from my red team mentor. So I do think that it was a very, very good junior pen testing experience. And while it was part of the offensive security side, I definitely was by no means as good as my red team mentors. So that is something I do want to throw in here. I am very much in my early career. Hopefully this can also be relatable to you guys who are in your early careers and want to switch into red team or blue team from whatever role that you're coming in from or from college or boot camp. So after that second role in my rotation program, my third role I switched into was not really related to offensive or defensive security. It was very much on the governance side of things and testing and secure software development lifecycle things. It's basically a very non-technical role. Honestly, I should have known that it really wasn't the best fit for me at the time, but, but anyways, I was a pretty short stint, honestly, and after that, I switched to my new job, which I'm currently working as a security analyst. And depending on what company you go to, a security analyst may or may not be performing the same job function as a SOC analyst or a security operations center analyst. And these are typically the most junior roles on the blue team or the defensive security side. So that's definitely something to note. I did switch jobs from a different company and then moving to my new company in sort of a blue team role, but I also feel like there are aspects, because I'm working in such a small team, there are definitely aspects where, where we want to do proactive things like the red team, but that's also something that we're trying to build into our security team, I guess. But for the most part, a lot of my daily tasks and daily tickets and things I deal with on a regular basis have to do a lot more with blue team compared to the red team. Okay, so since this video is specifically talking about red team to blue team, I do want to go over the skills I find most useful on the blue team and then go into transferable skills that I had taken from my previous roles and are able to still use them and have them be relevant in my current role. So I think if you're going into SOC analyst or security analyst, one of the main things would probably be alert fatigue. And that's probably something that you've heard of before. If you looked into blue team SOC analyst roles, pros and cons, just because as a SOC analyst, one of the main things, components of your job is going to be analyzing, reviewing different alerts, dashboards, messages, tickets in your inbox, and anything else that your company wants you to monitor. Of course, every company is going to be different. For example, I don't have a crazy number of alerts that come in on a regular basis, but I do have a lot of tickets. So it really depends what company you're going to, what team, and the types of alerts that you would be getting. But your main job is to prevent security incidents. For example, if there's someone who found a vulnerability, they might pass it to your team, and you might look into it, do some research, maybe do a POC or proof of concept. And those are probably the most technical aspects of my job, which I'll go into more in depth into the transferable skills section of this video. But usually for SOC analysts or the blue team, they're typically the first line of defense for any security events, any incidents, any any phishing alerts, all things cybersecurity that come into your company and is significant enough to bring up as an alert. And a lot of that really goes back to alert fatigue because often overstimulated for the types of things you see on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when you're doing this for years and years on end. A lot of times you're seeing so many different alerts in a day that it can really lead to burnout and I believe that's one of the main concerns of cybersecurity as a field in general but I feel that it's especially applicable to SOC analysts. So like I mentioned before I'm not working in a purely SOC analyst role. I'm working as a security analyst and I have blue team functions but there are also other parts of my job that aren't related to defensive security. But I really think the main skills I have as an SOC analyst is to make sure that you are able to stay on track for the alerts that actually matter and honestly it's sometimes going to be like a needle in the haystack especially if you're working in a company that gets many different security alerts and that in itself definitely creates a very stressful environment so just learning as quickly as possible the types of alerts in your company that, that make the most impact that are the most severe that will most likely need your attention more than the others basically prioritizing which 
alerts and things that you see are most important to work on now compared to the others that kind of fall to the wayside and probably won't make a big difference or are false positives is probably the number one skill to have and i don't know if there's a really good way to practice those skills unless you're doing it on the job there are tools like let's defend io which i have previously worked with on my channel before and they have a platform where you're able to where you're able to kind of act like you're in an soc and you're working as an incident responder or an soc analyst basically having like dashboard alerts or fake alerts that you can work on and try to fix and kind of take through that whole life cycle of defensive security those are probably the best ways to get experience but i do think that the blue team in general is definitely easier to get into as a beginner compared to the red team where they may require certain certifications but for the blue team lots of soc analysts actually come straight out of college or out of a boot camp so as long as you can show that you have the experience or the mindset to be able to learn and pick up different things quickly have a few cybersecurity projects on your resume maybe a beginner certification or an soc certification or even an incident response certification okay now going into the transferable skills for red team to blue team so i don't think there's one specific skill that i can that i can directly point out from red team to blue team but i do think that when you're on the red team you learn so much about different vulnerabilities exploits and and just being able to figure out where the vulnerabilities are in an application and i think i got the most of that doing capture the flags even if you're going into the blue team or interested in blue team if you do capture the flags it's really going to help you so much in understanding kind of like the mindset that you need to break into an application to find a vulnerability to do all those security hacker-ish related things and that has all been very helpful for me going into my current role as a security analyst where like i mentioned before if someone brings up a vulnerability and we as a security team have to verify check to see if it can actually be exploited before passing it over to the development team or whatever team to fix it we're the ones who do that initial check to see that it's a real vulnerability so in that process we do pocs or proof of concepts this is basically where the most of my pen testing skills come in and even though that every poc is going to be technical you're not always going to be using burp suite or nmap or scanning the different ports a lot of them are more application based or functional and for example let's say there's a vulnerability that allows for remote code execution whoever submitted this vulnerability is typically going to say hey i found this vulnerability or hey i think we might be vulnerable to this or hey can you check if we're vulnerable to this it really all depends but the first step is going to be you doing a lot of research on the vulnerability that they're bringing up what makes an application or a company susceptible to that vulnerability and then most of the time since we live in the era of the internet which is beautiful and wonderful um there's typically already going to be people who who have done pocs or at least have done some preliminary research for you to be able to understand where to start for how you can test if this vulnerability actually affects your applications or your organization and of course for some vulnerabilities this can take a week for others it can take a few weeks and it really all depends on how big it is and how many proof of concepts you have to do to be able to document and of course that's another thing so i guess the second big thing that you take from red team going into blue team is the fact that you still have to document a lot <laughs> definitely not as much as the red team though for example a pen test report from the red team just a typical one could probably be around 40 pages that's honestly pretty typical um i've seen some that are more than 100 pages some of them even close to 200 pages so i mean not all of it's going to be you know writing but a lot of it is like screenshots and breadcrumbs and showing people how to get that vulnerability and then helping them fix the vulnerability and making sure that it's remediated so on the blue team side of things the proof of concept reports or documents that you create can be similar to a pen test report but it's typically not as crazy <laughs> it's not as structured unless your company is really structured and they want you you know to have like follow a template and you have to fill in certain things and blah blah, blah. at least from my current experience i typically create my own template and include all the breadcrumbs or breadcrumbs are just steps that you follow to recreate a vulnerability and for someone else to be able to easily follow so if someone else wanted to know exactly what you did in each step and in each order then they can easily follow your breadcrumbs and get the same result as you so that's what you want to create usually that you include screenshots step one two three etc any notes that you might have things like that and while those can still be pretty lengthy it can still end up being 10 20 maybe 30 pages if you know it's a really big plc since i am still relatively new to my job um by the time you see this video i probably will have been working for a few months and that is not a very long time so i definitely do not know as much about pocs as some other people on my team and that's something i wanted to throw in here as well just because it's important to know that while i'm saying all this i feel like when i first heard of pocs and and doing these things about testing vulnerabilities and stuff like that it was definitely a bit intimidating just because i had never done pocs before it's just a different mindset going in compared to compared to my previous roles but just knowing that when you join a company you're most likely not going to be getting thrown into the deep end and expected to 
you know, just start swimming and knowing what to do, a lot of it does come with asking questions to my other teammates or following up with certain teams with certain questions, verifying and seeing if we're susceptible to certain things. So I think you guys all know this by now, but I do come from a software development background and I always want to throw in some coding things in my videos. But while I do think that a lot of red teamers probably already know how to code or at least understand how to read code, just because of the nature of their work, it's oftentimes more technical. You may be expected to look at some source code and that's pretty normal I believe, for most red team roles. Even as a junior pen tester, I was mostly looking at you know front-end JavaScript code, but for a red teamer, it may go into back-end. You may be looking at other things. So it's definitely a lot more in-depth. But in terms of blue team, I personally have not coded in my current role yet. Um, I know there are plans to add some scripting things and maybe for future POCs or proof of concepts, I may be able to help with some scripting in terms of exploits and finding certain vulnerabilities. But for now, I haven't done any of that. But one thing that I am planning on developing more is going into reverse engineering, binary files, different languages. The main ones I'm most interested in are Go and Python. And again, while I'm currently not coding in my role, I do think that it's very interesting to understand how how an exploit works, what the actual malware is doing. And that's something I've always been very intrigued by. Besides the fact that reverse engineering malware just sounds very interesting, um, I don't think that is specifically blue team related. I believe that's just completely separate malware detection, malware prevention, malware research kind of thing. But I do think it's going to be something interesting to look into, even as someone who is on the blue team, just because you never know when these skills are going to come up and be important. So one of my focuses for learning is going to be that reverse engineering malware, looking at different binary files. Right now it's completely black box to me. I have no idea how it works. Maybe I'll do some videos on that in the future if I'm able to, I don't know, do some research on it and learn more. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do like a test video. If that's something you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments below and I'll do like a how to reverse engineer a binary or something like that because I think that would be a pretty cool video to do. But yeah, so right now, not really that much coding. I have downloaded a bunch of IDEs and different and different things onto my computer, but I haven't used them for, for work things yet besides just playing around and practicing with them. All right, so last thing on this list is certifications. And I do think that cybersecurity is one of the biggest fields that really care about certifications. For example, you probably won't find, you know, a company looking for software engineers that really is asking for a software engineering certification. Like that typically doesn't really exist. Um, but in terms of entry level, I do think across the board, one of the best entry level certifications is the Security Plus. I had taken the Security Plus in my first year of working on the job, and it was very, very helpful uh, just in terms of understanding different security concepts that are very general across the board that could be helpful for someone on the red team and the blue team. And I can link that video below of how I passed my Security Plus in the description. But for the most part, if you're interested in red team, the certifications that you hear the most about are probably the CH or the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification and the OSCP, the Offensive Security Certified Professional. The OSCP is definitely, you know, a step above the CH, which I believe CH is a bit more like early slash mid career. And the OSCP is definitely a lot more impressive and probably what employers are looking for in terms of red team. One of my previous ethical hacking mentors was studying for his OSCP and, and he showed me the trainings. The organization that provides this exam also provides a platform. Obviously you have to pay for it, but um, they provide a testing platform where you can practice hacking into different boxes and machines and stuff, which is also very cool. Just seeing how people are thinking about these things. But in terms of SOC analysts, these are typically more early to mid-career roles. So while I do think that a security plus may probably be enough to help get you that first role as an SOC or a security analyst, there are other certifications out there like the CSA or the Certified SOC Analyst Certification from the EC Council, as well as the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus Certification from CompTIA. So there's actually very, very many SOC analyst certifications out there. The CSA is probably the most well known, but in terms of blue team in general, you can also get incident response certifications or or certifications specifically around disaster recovery or even just generic blue team certifications out there. But I do think that a lot of these certifications on the blue team side are definitely a lot less technical and hands-on compared to the red team where you actually physically have to hack into five machines or whatever number it is to pass your OSCP exam. And you have to do all of that within 24 hours, which is which honestly can be very intense compared to certifications for the blue team where you're most likely going to be taking a regular exam that is not 24 hours long and is going to be sitting down there may be multiple choice questions and maybe some interactive questions where they provide a diagram and you have to fill in certain things but definitely not as hands-on as exams like the oscp all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below as well as any certifications that you might want to add to the list if you're someone who has gone into the blue team in your early career 
By the way, I've also made a video on how to study for cybersecurity certifications linked in the description below as well if you guys are interested in checking that out. And as always, the Discord is linked below. I also have cybersecurity career resources linked in the description as well for anyone who's interested in updating your resume, cover letter, as well as cybersecurity interview prep. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.